All right, so the question says they would like you to completely factor. They want you to use synthetic division to completely factor the polynomial. So think about this. What does completely you know, factor really kind of mean? And let's just look at you know, a number. If you guys remember like 12, all right, we factor this called what we call prime factorization, breaking this down into prime numbers. So we could say 6 times 2, right? Those are factors. And they're factors because why? 6 and 2 both evenly divide into 12, correct? 6 divides into 12 two times, correct? Then you could break, break down 6 into 3 and 2. So therefore, what we call the prime factorization of 12 is 3 times 2 times 2. Does everybody agree with that? Yes? So that's, what, that's basically like completely factoring the number 12. You're breaking it down into its prime numbers. That is numerically what we do with numbers. With a polynomial, it's the same kind of thing. They're asking us to completely factor this. So if they're saying x minus 1 is a factor, what does that tell you? If it's a factor, what does that mean? Anybody want to raise their hand? What does it mean if it factors? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Alexis, what does it mean? It evenly divides. And how do we know if it evenly divides? If it evenly divides, that means the remainder is? Zero. zero. So we know if it's a factor, if it's a factor, Nathan, if we use division, then we're going to have a remainder of 0. So let's go ahead and divide. So we have, um, remember when using, now first of all, we notice that this is, this factor has a power of 1, right? So we could use long division. However, synthetic division would be, um, is apply, we can apply synthetic division for this type of problem. So therefore, I, if this is my factor, to use synthetic division, we want to find the 0. Right? So we'd add 1, add 1. So x equals 1 is the 0. Everybody follows me? Do the same process every time. So we have 1. Then we take the coefficients of each of our terms, 1, 1, negative 10, and 8. So bring down the first term, 1. 1 times 1 is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. So we add vertically, multiply diagonally. 2 times 1 is 2. Negative 10 plus 2 is going to be a um, negative 8. Negative 8 times 1 is negative 8 and 0. So therefore, we have a remainder of 0. So can we say that it is a, it is a factor? Yes, because it evenly divides, right? But remember, guys, if you have a factor, the answer to your fa the answer um, is also not is going to be called a quotient, but it's also called another factor. Think about it. Think about going back to 12. 6 is a factor of 12, right? Because 6 divides into 12 how many times? 2. Is the answer 2, is that also a factor of 6? Yes. So then what does that say about our answer here? Is this also a factor? Yes. They're asking you to completely factor the polynomial. So therefore, we know that x minus 1 is a factor because it evenly divided. And then the answer, which in this case is your remainder constant linear, co linear and quadratic, that's going to be x squared plus 2x minus 8. That is also a factor, correct? Now can, we, now, can we factor this further down? It's a trinomial, right? We can factor trinomials. So when we factor this down, what we get is x, x plus 4, no, yes, x plus 4, x minus 2. That is your completely factored polynomial. If you were to multiply all those polynomials, all of these factors, what would you get? Your original polynomial. Just like when we did 12, the completely factored form of 12 was 3 times 2 times 2. If I multiply 3 times 2 times 2, what does that give me? 12. So when I completely factor a polynomial, these factors multiply to give you this. Now, this wasn't part of the question, but this is what I was talking about, what's really important about this. What if I said I want to find all the zeros, all the solutions, or all the x-intercepts of this graph? Well, if I already have all the factors, now what do I need to do? What do you do to find to go from factors to zeros? Yes, Alexa? You set your factors equal to 0, and then apply the zero product property. So x minus 1 equals 0. This wasn't part of your problem, but I'm trying to go to the next level with you. 
So therefore, the solution set is x equals 1, x equals negative 4, and x equals 2. And let's double check our answer using the fundamental theorem of algebra. How many, zero, how many solutions do we have? 3. What is the degree? 3. What is the multiplicity of all of my zeros? 1, right? Could, do we have enough information to graph this if, we, if they asked us? Huh? How do we only have one direction? We have a multiplicity of 1. Because okay. the power of each factor is 1. Does everybody see that? Could we graph this? Yes. What is the end behavior? Well, since it's odd and the leading coefficient is positive, the graph falls left, rises right. Again, this isn't what the question was asking, but I'm really trying to connect everything with you guys. So we know the graph goes, looks like this. Then the zeros are at 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 4, and at 2. Right? There you go, just in case they asked. Because I don't know what the question on the test might be. But now you guys can see how all of this stuff is related. So all you, guys, all you had to do was just this. But I want you guys to understand, the question might ask on a test, what are the zeros? So once you completely factor it, set it equal to 0 and solve. If it says, find the, if it says graph it, find the end behavior, plot the solutions as your x-intercepts, Tyler, and then you can go ahead and graph. Yes, Kelsey? The degree. The degree is either even or even or odd. That degree is odd. So if you look on your in if you look on your end behavior notes, it's either even or odd. Then you look at the leading coefficient. It's either positive or negative. Based on those two values, you can determine what the end behavior is. Okay? Any other questions? It's a really, really, really important problem.